and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman, and in this lesson, we're going to learn a piece called The Village Prophet by a French composer of the late Baroque period, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Let's have a listen to this piece. Let's analyze the score for The Village Prophet. You can see our tempo indication is allegretto, which means kind of a medium fast. We've got treble and bass clef, and let's analyze our key signature and time signature. We've got two flats. Can you tell me the names of these two flats? If you look at the line that crosses through this flat, we know we've got a B flat, and then we're in the top space here, one step below our flag F line, so that's an E flat. So a B flat, E flat puts us here on the ladder of fourths. We'll either be in the key of B flat major or G minor. How do we tell which? Well, let's look at the score. We want to look at what notes or chords we start on and finish on. Here at the start, we've got this G in the bass clef, and this D up in the treble clef. So a G and a D. And looking at the last note of the piece, we see that we have a G in both hands. Now, that's a very strong clue that we are in the key of G minor. Now, so we know we're in the key of G minor with two flats, B flat and E flat. We see we're in the time signature of three, four, now, before we try playing this, let's go through uh, this top right-hand part. And I'd like you to press pause, and in your own music, which you should download and print from our website, go through and circle any Bs or Es that you can find. Remember, it's not just the Bs and Es on this line or this space, but any Bs or Es on this entire staff. For example, we've got a D, D, and an E right here. I'm going to circle that because I want to remind myself that this note is flat automatically from the key signature. So press pause and on your own, go through and circle all the Bs and E flats. Let's do line one and line two all the way through measure eight. Press pause to circle the flats and then press play to go on. In your own music, here's what you should have circled. There were two E's here, some B's here that need to become B flat, and a few on the next line as well. Anything we didn't circle will be a white key. Now, let's practice the rhythm for the right hand part. Will you point on the screen with me and let's chant the rhythm words. We'll go back to our old ta ti ti words and just whisper rest for the rest. Okay, and let's go through both of these lines. Speak it with me. I'll count three beats and then we'll start. Point and speak with me. One, two, three. Ta, ti, ti, ta, rest. Ti, ti, ta, 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 ti, 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 ta. Ta, ti, ti, ta, rest. Ti, ti, ta, 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 three. Great. Now, let's count the beat. So we'll count out loud. One, two, three, while we tap the rhythm this time. Okay, I'll count three beats to get us ready, and then we'll start. Tap and count with me. One, two, three. 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 
since this piece is in G minor, let's just quickly review where our flats are going to be. Remember, we have a B flat and an E flat. Can you just go up and down your piano and just find and play all your B flats and E flats? Let's try this with me. Okay, B flat and E flat are what you're looking out for. Now, let's take a look at these first four measures. Can you tell me the letter name of the first note the right hand plays? If you said D, you're correct. And we have a finger two on that D. And if we look ahead, we'll see that in a moment we're going to be playing that E flat. So you might have your finger three ready there. Okay. Then if we look into measure three, you'll see at this point, after we play this C, our finger three is going to have to glide over to this B flat. Okay. Now, I want to challenge you to figure out these first four measures on your own. Try to read through this. Be careful of the rhythms and the notes. Don't forget your E flat and your B flat. Give it a try on your own and uh, press pause to work that out and then press play and we'll try it together. Here's what you should have figured out. Rest. Now, let's try it together one measure at a time. I'll play one measure, then you echo it back. One, two, three. Now you try. Next measure, rest. Two, three. Your turn. Good. In the next measure, we have one, then three crosses over to B flat. So three notes stepping down. One, three, two. Now you try. Good. Then in measure four, we have T, 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 Ta. Your turn. Good. Then all together we get rest. T, T, Ta, 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 T, 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 Ta. Now press pause one more time and work on that line until you feel like you're playing it really confidently. Then press play to go on. Now, take a look at measures five through eight and tell me what you notice. Is this the same as line one? Almost the same, right? You have to be careful in music to check every note. You can see that measures five, six, and seven are the same as measures one, two, and three, but then when we get to measure eight, this time we have a dotted half note, which equals three beats, and we step all the way down to G this time. So starting at measure five, we have ta, ti, ti, ta, rest, ti, ti, ta, 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 one, two, three. So now press pause and work on measures five through eight, and then press play to go on. Now you might have noticed one other little change, and that is in the fingering. This first note in measure five is marked finger five, and that's because back in measure four, we end on a finger one, and so it might be the most comfortable to use a finger five and then switch to a two there. Okay, see how I did that? Here's the end of measure four, and then five, da, da, da. So five, and then I switch. Even though the notes are the same, the fingering's a little different to accommodate where your hand is in measure four. Now, take a look at measures nine through 16 and tell me what you notice. If you check every single note carefully, you'll see the notes are exactly the same. Is there anything that's different? The only thing that's different here is the dynamic marking. In measure nine, it's marked piano. So this will kind of be like an echo. Okay, so now you know all of the first page of the Village Prophet. So press pause and review this entire page. Follow the dynamics. Be careful of the rhythms, notes, and flats. And then press play and we'll tackle the next page.
Now let's analyze the right-hand part for measures 17 through 24. Once again, let's find and circle all the notes that will be automatically flat. So it will help us watch out for it as we're practicing. Will you press pause and go through, find any notes that are B's or E's, go ahead and circle them. Then press play to go on. Here's what you should have circled. I found four B's on this first line and then four more B's here. And I didn't find any E's. Now we also might want to circle these F sharps. There's an F sharp right here, which is because the sharp comes in the flow of the music, we'd call that an accidental. An accidental is any sharp or flat that's actually written in the music, not in the key signature. And then this F would also be F sharp because it's on the same space as this sharped F there. And then on this line, we also have another F sharp. Where does this F sharp come from? Remember that in the key of G harmonic minor, we also have an F sharp. So at, at this point in the music, we'll be in the key of G harmonic minor. Let's try to play it on the piano. Okay, looking at measure 17, we see that we start with finger three on this B flat. And we have ta, ti, ti, ta, rest. Ti, ti, ta, rest. Ti, ti, ta. Then we switch to finger three on G. Ti, 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 ta. Three, two, four, two, one. Let's start with this measure because it's probably the trickiest measure on this line. So, can you try this? Three on G, three, two on F sharp, four, two, one. Now you try. Again, T, 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 ta. Now you try. Good, then go back and we'll try the whole line. Ta, T, T, ta, rest. T, T, ta, rest. T, T, ta. Press pause and work on that line on your own, then press play to go on. Now let's pay attention to the dynamics this time. We start piano, then we have this crescendo mark, so we're going to build, and then we have another day crescendo. And when a phrase ends with a day crescendo, you want to float your forearm and wrist a little bit. So those notes have a gentle ending. T, 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 ta. Then on the next line, you'll notice the notes are much the same until we get here. One, two. And another day crescendo means we're going to float the wrist as we finish that phrase. Now, press pause and work on measures 17 through 24, working on the dynamics, the notes, the rhythms, be sure to float the wrist and forearm a little bit on both of those phrase endings. Press pause to work on all of that and then press play to go on. Now let's look at measures 25 all the way to the end. Tell me what you notice. You should have noticed that the right hand part is exactly the same as our A section. So we already know this. The one thing to be sure to catch though is this repeat sign at the end. So that will take us back to measure 17 where you see this forward facing repeat sign. So we'll do this second page again to finish the piece. So now that you know all the notes for the right hand part, I encourage you to practice it carefully and as you're starting to feel confident, you can bring in the metronome to help you with your practicing. I would start with the metronome probably at about 100 beats per minute, and that's your quarter note. So it'd be ta, ti, ti, ta, rest. Ti, ti, ta, 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 ti, 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 ta, rest. Ti, ti, ta, 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 one, two, three. And as you feel really confident with that, you can gradually speed it up, but I wouldn't go past about 126. So 
will be a good allegretto performance speed. And then once you have the right hand mastered, you'll be ready to add the left hand soon. Great work learning the right hand part of the Village Prophet. Thanks for watching and learning with me. And happy practicing! Listen to me, look out, there is a dinosaur. He's coming soon, look out, there's a dinosaur. Mm, do you believe that? Mm, not really. Hi, everyone! No! Mm, happens every time. Yes, I tried to warn them. Hey! No, oh my!